Hey everybody, Pete with Optics for Birding here again. Uh, first off, just wanted to thank everybody that's been following our channel. Uh, you've been giving us some great feedback and we've gotten a really good response so far on a lot of our comparison videos and review video uh, where we've looked at different binoculars and scopes and tripods and all that stuff. Today, we're gonna be zooming out a little bit and beginning the first part of our series on a buying guide uh, so that we can help you navigate the optics market a little bit better, give you a better understanding of how binoculars and scopes work. Um, and the first thing that we're gonna be talking about is magnification, objective lens diameter, and exopupil, which I know is technically three things, but um, really those are three of the most basic concepts when it comes to binoculars and scopes that are all super important when you're trying to figure out which binoculars right for you, uh, how to buy a gift for somebody that's you know maybe not gonna have the same personal preferences as you, that kind of thing. So um, again, this is gonna be the first part of our buying guide series, and uh, we're gonna start with magnification, objective lens diameter, and exopupil. I'm gonna give you guys the full rundown today of what those things mean. Let's get into it. All right, so my favorite nickname for binoculars is far lookers. I'm forgetting who I heard that from, but you know, the idea is that a lot of us buy binoculars with the intention of seeing a little bit further, right? So probably the most common question that we get from people is how far can these binoculars see? Or, you know, they, they come to us and they say, hey, I wanna be able to see a thousand yards away at, you know, a lighthouse, or, uh, you know, I wanna be able to see the cosmos really well, or I wanna see uh, a hummingbird in my feet are really well. All these things that are at different distances. And of course, it makes sense to ask what kind of magnification is gonna be right for you in all those different situations. So let's start by defining what magnification is. Um, it's basically a dimensionless number that means how much larger is the image through a binocular gonna appear uh, compared to your naked eye, right? So if you're using an eight power binocular, uh, whatever you're looking at is gonna look eight times larger than with your naked eye. Um, if you're using a 10 power binocular, it's gonna look 10 times larger, 12 power is gonna look 12 times larger and so on, right? So eight and 10 power are the most common magnifications that we sell. Um, and for good reason, uh, they're basically, you know, a really good middle ground between enlarging the image and giving you a wide enough field of view so that you can keep track of other things other than just what you're focusing on. So everything that we're going to talk about today is completely independent of the quality of the optics, magnification and objective lens diameter. Um, they have nothing to do with the quality of the glass, the quality of the lens coatings and the build quality of the binocular as a whole. Um, they're really just like geometric properties that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my best to separate that from quality, but there are reasons that you would want to pick certain magnifications over others. For example, um, if you were looking at exclusively long distances and you don't care about how wide your field of, of view is, you just want to get as much detail as possible on a long distance object. In that scenario, it's going to make a lot more sense to stick with a really high power binocular, maybe like 15 or 20. And if you think you need even more than that, it might be good to go to a spotting scope. Um, on the other hand, let's take the opposite situation where you might be looking at just insects in your garden, uh, hummingbird feeder, that kind of thing, where you're, you're in much closer quarters. Um, too much magnification is going to narrow your field of view too much. You're going to get tunnel vision. It's going to be harder to keep track of things that are moving in your periphery. It's going to be harder to find things if you're scanning around with your binoculars, right? So eight and 10 power for birding and most general applications are the most popular choices that we sell because they're just kind of that perfect blend of detail and image enlargement versus a wide field of view uh, that lets you scan and find things in the binoculars or keep track of moving things if you lose them initially. Second point I should make is that magnification has very, very little, if, if nothing, uh, to do with the actual size of the binoculars. Um, objective lens diameter, which is the diameter of the far lens of the, uh, the binoculars, the one that's furthest away from your face, that's really what's gonna give you the actual weight and the bulk of the binocular, right? So again, the objective lens furthest from your face, not the end that you look through, but the end over here, um, that's called the objective lens. And the diameter of that lens, whether it's 42 millimeters, 56 millimeters, 30 millimeters, 25 millimeters, that's really what determines the size of the binoculars. And the reason I basically have two of each of these in front of my table here is that I'm trying to illustrate this point again, that the magnification has very little to do with the size of the binocular. So here you might think, why did you get two binoculars out that are the exact same? Well, just to demonstrate my point, right? So um, this one on the left is a 10 by 25. The one on the right is an eight by 25. So that means that both of them have the same exact objective lens diameter, right? there's just a tiny little change in the way that the manufacturer designs the eyepiece to accomplish that different magnification. Um, so it, it really doesn't contribute much to the overall weight uh, at all. And you would not really know the difference between these until you look through them because um, how they feel in your hand, how they appear on a scale, if you measure the weight, it's gonna be the same. Uh, moving on to the next size, I've got 
Uh, once again, a 10 by 30 and an 8 by 30. Same story there. They look physically the same. It's just the view that's different. Uh, going up in size again to our two best selling sizes. I've got a 10 by 42 and an 8 by 42. So again, 42 millimeter objective lens, but same look and feel on the binoculars, just different view. And last but not least, I've got these monsters over here, one of which is a 15 by 56, one is an 8 by 56. So if you take a ruler, measure the diameter of that glass, it's going to be the exact same. Uh, but the 15 by 56, which means, you know, 15 power, uh, you're going to be much more zoomed in than you would be with the 8 by 56 because you're only zooming in eight times. The way that magnification and objective lens diameter are related is a little bit abstract, but it's something called the exit pupil. So if I take any of these binoculars and I hold them up to the camera with the eyepiece facing you, uh, that little circle of light that's emerging from the center is called the exit pupil, which is basically, um, think of it as the image that's produced by the binoculars on this end. Um, the entrance pupil, on the other hand, would be the, in the image that's produced uh, on the opposite end. So the way that you find the diameter of the exit pupil on any pair of binoculars is you take the objective lens diameter. So again, 42 millimeters in this case, because I'm using a 10 by 42. Um, and you divide that diameter by the magnification, which in this case is 10 because I'm using a 10 power. So 42 divided by 10 is 4.2. That means that that exopupil or the little area that uh, produces the image in a binocular is 4.2 millimeters across. Um, the reason that the size of that is important is that if your pupil is smaller than that exopupil or uh, you know, just about that size, you're going to be in good shape. If your pupil dilates in low light conditions, it gets bigger than the exit pupil in the binocular, um, you might run into some trouble. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, there are plenty of situations where exit pupil is not even something that we think about, right? So think of, you know, sporting events, um, going on a hike in, in broad daylight, like your pupil is going to be as contracted as it can possibly be because there's a lot of bright ambient light your pupil is going to respond to that and contract as much as possible. So for most adults, you know, you're looking at two millimeters and below. Um, so that means in theory, as long as your binoculars exit pupil is at least two millimeters in diameter, um, you're going to be in good shape. Your pupil is going to be able to stay inside that little circle that I just illustrated. And that means you're going to be able to see the full image. Now, um, let me take this example over here again. This is a 10 by 25, meaning the diameter of the exit pupil is 25 millimeters divided by 10, which is the power, you get two and a half millimeters. So in broad daylight situa situations, that's gonna be just fine because your pupil again is really contracted. And even if it dilates a tiny bit, you know, if, if you get some cloud cover or something like that, more than likely you're gonna be okay with this size because um, even if your pupil does dilate up to two millimeters, you still have that extra half millimeter in that circle where your, your pupil can bounce around. So, you know, if you're, not perfectly still, which applies to just about every one of us, right? You've got a little bit of tremor in the binoculars, and that means that your pupil is going to be jostling around uh, the exit pupil. So the reason that's important is that if it moves left and right up and down too much, all of a sudden you're going to be seeing the black parts around that exit pupil, which is actually like the inside of the binocular and the eyepiece. So obviously we, w we don't want that to happen. We want our pupils to stay dead center in the middle of those exit pupils. And as long as that's the case, you're going to see the nice, beautiful image that the binocular produces. If you're in low light situations, um, you would never want to use a 10 by 25, right? Because uh, for most adults in really, really low light situations, you know, think of people going birding at like 4 a.m. Uh, or if you're a hunter and you're getting up at first light to scout for deer or, you know, in the extreme case, if you're doing astronomy in the middle of a desert where there's no light around, um, you want to make sure that you're getting a big enough exit pupil in your binoculars to accommodate the dilation of your own pupil because of the lack of ambient light. So if you're getting binoculars for a really young kid, um, their pupil is going to be able to dilate quite a bit more, uh, in some cases up to seven or eight millimeters. And that's why we have binoculars like an eight by 56. So um, again, you've got a really big objective lens at 56 millimeters, and you've got fairly low power of only eight. So you divide 56 by eight, you get that seven millimeter exit pupil, um, which is quite a bit larger than most of us need. But again, you know, if, if somebody's got perfect eyes and they're in really dark situations, like uh, they would be doing astronomy in the middle of nowhere, um, there are situations where their pupil can dilate so much that even a five millimeter exit pupil is not gonna cut it. So in those situations, you wanna make sure that you're accommodating that pupil dilation 
and uh, a seven millimeter exopupil is about as big as most consumer binoculars get. So um, beyond that, you might want to start looking at a telescope. But once again, for handheld binoculars, which all of these pretty much are, you know, some of them you'd want to use on a tripod for extra stability, but um, all of these can be used in your hands. Um, seven millimeters is about the very, very maximum size uh, for the exopupil that you would need. Now, let's talk about a little bit in between uh, these two extremes that I just mentioned, right? So again, just to reiterate, 10 by 25, really only usable in very bright conditions because you have a small uh, two and a half millimeter exit pupil. It doesn't give your pupil much room to dilate before you get into trouble, right? On the other hand, an eight by 56 has that massive seven millimeter exit pupil that you really only need if you're in pitch black and your eyes can dilate uh, <laughs> that much. And that really only applies to the very youngest of us, right? So for most of us, we want you know, the perfect blend of low light performance and portability, field of view, magnification, all these things that uh, matter when you're birding or hunting or doing any sort of uh, nature observation. So the, the area that a lot of our customers land actually is right in the middle here. And when you get to that point, it comes down to how much low light performance you need, how much magnification you need versus portability, because those two things are mortal, mortal enemies, right? With the smaller binoculars, they're gonna have a smaller exit pupil, and that means you're not gonna be able to use them in as low light situations as the larger ones, because the, the small exit pupil on the smaller binoculars is just not gonna leave as much wiggle room for your eye. Um, on the other hand, you know, there are some people that look at these you know, 8x42s and 10x42s, and they just go, man, this is way too heavy. This is uh, way more than I want, you know, dangling around my neck, or even if I have a harness, it's just way more than I want to carry around. Uh, or, you know, if it's a matter of being able to fit it in your backpack or not, you know, our motto here is the best binoculars are the ones that you're going to bring with you, right? So what I always, always, always recommend is before you think about magnification at all, um, what you want to ask yourself is how much are you really willing to take with you? And that's going to come down to the objective lens diameter more than anything, right? As I hope I've made clear by now, Magnification doesn't really influence the size of the binocular, uh, but you do have to think about it when you look at the exit pupil. So I would say you should approach it in reverse, look at the objective lens diameter first and say, all right, is this binocular gonna be too big for me or is this about uh, the upper limit as far as how much I'm willing to carry? Um, I would always say just get the biggest thing that you're willing to carry around because that's gonna give you those bigger objective lenses. That means you can go higher in power before you get an exit pupil that's too small. And um, you know, that, extra lens size is just going to give you more brightness and more resolution, especially in those low light conditions that I mentioned. So the reason that 8x42 and 10x42 are particularly popular is that they're right at that middle point for a lot of customers. You know, this is um, a little bit on the larger side, but it's still very comfortable for even a lot of folks with smaller hands to hold. Um, this, you know, particular pair, the Swarovski NLP, weighs close to 30 ounces, so it's not light as a feather, but it's by no means, you know, this gigantic one over here. Um, so once you've determined that that's the perfect size for you in terms of, you know, how much you're willing to hold, um, then it becomes a question of, all right, do I want eight power, 10 power, 12 power, maybe a little bit less, maybe I'll go down to six power or something like that. But, you know, when you've gotten to this stage of the game and you're like, okay, I know what size I'm comfortable with. Now it's just a matter of catering the view to my specific needs. Um, then you got to ask yourself, do you need as much detail as you can possibly get? Meaning, do you need as much zoom as you can get uh, to get those longer distance targets, you know, magnified enough? Um, or would you prefer a wider field of view? So if you think that you need a little bit more um, help getting birds on target, if you think that you want binoculars that are a little bit easier to scan around with and find stuff, lower magnification is going to make that a little bit easier because you're working with a wider field of view. You can see more at any given time. And that means that if you're panning around or you're getting your binoculars up to find something, um, you're covering more area at a, at a given time, right? So that's going to make it much easier to get on target. On the flip side, uh, the disadvantage that you get when you're widening your field of view is that you don't get as much detail. So that's where the higher power binoculars come in, like a 10 power. This happens to be what I use personally as a 10 by 42 um, because I just think it's, it's a big binocular that I'm willing to take with me and it gets me close enough to birds that I get really reliable IDs. I see as much detail as I want. Um, and I personally don't scan around with my binoculars a whole lot. Um, I don't have a whole lot of a hard time getting birds on target once I've seen them with my naked eye. And you know, that's one of the things that some people think they wouldn't be able to do reliably with a 10, but then they come into our store and try it and it's no problem. So 
you really got to train yourself to look at a bird and then bring the binoculars up to your eyes so that you're getting it on target. The probably the most common mistake that I see a little bit more like inexperienced users make is that they see, you know, the bird of a lifetime, right? And then they get so excited that they look down at their binoculars and they try to raise the view up to get it on target. So if you do that, you're just asking for trouble. You're going to spend more time trying to find the bird again than IDing it. Um, but you know, all of that is to say that it, with practice, a lot of birders are going to 10 power binoculars because if they can spot them with their naked eye and get the 10 power on target, they're going to get more detail from that than they would get with the eight power. Now, again, like I said, this little block right here is kind of where most of our customers end up, right? So um, there are plenty of people out there that are just like, man, I love the view of these. They're beautiful, but it's just way too much to take with me. Uh, or, you know, I've got a backpack that I would love to bring these in, but it's just too big and bulky. I need to go to something smaller. So uh, let's look at the next two down. So these are the Zeiss uh, SFL 30 binoculars. Again, they look the same. This one is a 10 by 30. This one's an 8 by 30. Uh, so the reason that it becomes a little bit more important to look at the exit people in this case is that when you're working with those smaller lenses, that means that this 8 power is going to have a much smaller exit pupil than this 8 power, right? Because of that smaller objective lens size. So again, this is an 8 by 42. You've got about a five and a quarter millimeter uh, of exit pupil there. And this is an 8 by 30. So you've got close to four millimeters, but not quite. So the reason that's important again is that if your pupil dilates and becomes bigger than this exit pupil, it might be worth considering going up to this if you can. But if you think, nope, this is my absolute size limit. I can't go with anything bigger than this. Um, just know that you are going to be a little bit limited in terms of what you can do in low light. So going with an even more extreme case, if we look at the 10 by 30, again, um, 30 millimeters divided by 10, you've got a three millimeter exit pupil there. I would not recommend using this in really shady conditions like the jungle or, you know, really early morning, late evening, because your pupil is just more than likely going to dilate to get bigger than that, right? So if you think like, all right, I really need 10 power to be able to identify birds that I'm seeing at a distance, um, but I don't want to carry any more than this physical size binocular. 10 by 30 is one of the least popular sizes that we sell for that exact reason, is that the exit pupil is a little bit too small for low light conditions. Um, and if, you know, if you've gotten to the point where you think this is my absolute size limit and it's just a matter of catering the view a little bit more, some people will opt for the 8 by 30 because it gives them that extra you know, margin of error in the low light conditions. So, I hope that I've <laughs> beaten all these points to death enough for you to understand a little bit more about them now. Um, if you'd like, you're more than welcome to visit our website, opticsforbirding.com, uh, to learn a little bit more. Uh, you can always reach out to us on social media or comment in the comment section below to ask some questions. We always love to give you guys some answers if you're a little bit confused still. Um, and lastly, you can always call us at 877-674-2473 if you had any questions. Love to chat with you, and uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.